this video, I'd like to cover a little bit about slip trailing. Now, slip trailing is a very, very age-old method. It's been done for centuries. It's when you put watered down clay or slip into an applicator of some sort and you can squeeze or perhaps dribble it onto the piece. Um, slip trailing uh, has been done, as I said, for centuries. Uh, original slip trailers, if you Google images, you'll find some clay slip trailers with uh, multiple holes where maybe they would put uh, quills in them. Uh, what I'm going to be using today are just uh, either the rubber bulb syringe or uh, just a plain old plastic applicator. You could even use, um, you know, everyday objects that you might have, might have around your house, um, like hair dye applicators. Um, one of the really cool ones, which um, I, I wasn't using today, is I, uh, I've seen the hair dye applicators where they have like oh, maybe a dozen little spouts. So if you wanted a lot of lines that were all, you know, evenly spaced, you could do something like that. You could just find that in, you know, a local uh, um, pharmacy the type of store that sells hair dye. So what I wanted to do here is just show you a little bit about how you can uh, do some fun texture or design. And in this case, I'm just going to be texturing the rim of this plate. I'm going to shake up my slip because it is a uh, slip and it will settle in the bottle. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to do some polka dots on here. Now you can see that this plate is leather hard. You do not have to do them when they're leather hard necessarily. You could applique on, or apply it, I should say, on bone dry. But when it is bone dry, you have to watch the thickness of your slip. If it's too thick, it will peel off. Now in the case of this, this is pretty thick. This is kind of pudding-like. You can see how it's standing up. It is not going to be this thick when it dries because, of course, there's water in the slip, which gives it volume, and it is going to shrink down. I will admit I am not the best slip trailer. There are people out there, if you Google images of contemporary slip trailing, you will see people who have beautiful lines and beautiful precision. I just do it for fun. So I'm going to do this and I'll come back and I'll show you another one. Alrighty, so I have slip trailed this plate. All in all, it probably took me about five minutes maybe. Um, it's uh, going to get a little bit less pronounced. Uh, as it dries, the water is going to evaporate. It's going to shrink down a little bit, and uh, I'll show you that in a little bit when it looks a, a little less pronounced there. Next, I'm just going to do a slip trail design on a cup. Now, you can see what I've done here is I've already drawn out in marker. I drew out a rough design that I wanted to do, and um, I'm going to switch to this smaller bulb syringe for this. Alright, so here is my slip trail cup. Now, again, this is going to get a little bit more subtle as it dries and the points will be less pronounced. If you need to go back in there and add a second layer, you certainly could. Alright, I have carved this plate with a decorative rim. This was a wheel trim plate and I drew the design, carved it with an exacto knife, cleaned up the edges, and now I'm going to do a little bit of slip trailing on this. Okay, there's a slip trail plate. On this cup, I didn't use a marker, I actually just kind of lightly carved in where I wanted the slip trail. And another cup.
The final thing that I wanted to mention about slip trailing is sometimes at the termination of a line or maybe with dots, you may have kind of a sharp point. Um, when the slip is uh, firm enough that it's not going to be sticky, it is nice to go back in there and press down those points. Now, if you do have um, uh, maybe some difficulty doing this with your finger, you could always take a, kind of a soft cloth, um, lay the soft cloth across, and you can just pinch it down that way. You can even take like a, a, a roller if you wanted to and roll across it if you're not going to uh, damage your form. Um, I had the issues with the dots here on the plate, the termination of some of those lines where I say picked up the bottle where it came off because I don't want anything that's sharp. Uh, when it's glazed, if you have a point, it's going to end up by being quite sharp. And lastly, on this mug, on these polka dots and everything, here I would just take those down, just soften them a little bit again so it's more like a softened dot. Not all of them have it, just some of them. More of a softened dot than a sharp point. Unless, of course, you're going for a sharp point. But that's, that's how I would do the slip trailing. And of course, when you go to glaze, you really want to think about utilizing a glaze that's going to enhance the texture. Glazes like um, a celadon glaze in, in a celadon series, they have a transparency about them. They go thicker in uh, some texture areas. That would be perfect to um, bring out the texture. Uh, one of the worst things you can do is use a totally opaque glaze that hides the texture that you've uh, worked so hard to achieve there. Okay. And that's slip trailing.